In this video, we're going to take a look at a way that companies can reduce their borrowing costs. It's quite a clever way, it's called a swap. Uh, sadly, it's not something that's directly available to um, retail investors uh, because the amounts involved are fairly large. But it is an important part of how banks go about determining what, for example, you pay on your mortgage, whether that's a fixed or variable rate, and also what you ultimately get charged for loans. So the swaps market is huge and it underpins an awful lot of what goes on day to day when it comes to your basic financial needs and products. So what we'll do is take a quick look at a swap, uh, how it works, how banks make money from it, and uh, also one or two of the applications. And we're gonna focus on uh, interest rate swaps. Interest rates are thought to be on the way up. The Bank of England uh, may raise rates this year. The only question is when. Um, so in financial markets, uh, companies and banks will be running around uh, wondering how to uh, hedge an exposure to what could be rising interest rates after a period of relatively low rates. Okay, so what is a basic swap? Well, imagine you've got a company and for the sake of argument, I'll just call them uh, company A. And just to demonstrate how a uh, swaps bank makes money, um, I'll have two clients in my example. So company A and company B. And a bit like you or I, they need to borrow money in order to expand. They need five million each, just like you might apply for a mortgage. And they have different views about interest rates. So um, company A would like, ideally, to borrow at a variable rate of interest. Perhaps they feel that interest rates are on the way down. Or um, Company B would like to pay a fixed rate of interest, and that's a bit like the mortgage market. Uh, some people like a fixed rate of interest over, say, five years. Uh, some people are happy to take a variable rate of interest over the same term, and banks have to cater to both types of mortgagee. So um, remember that Company A's aim is to pay variable interest on the money it borrows, and it's going to borrow five million. <clears throat> Company B would like to pay fixed interest on the money it borrows, and it's also going to borrow five million. And these two companies don't actually know each other. Um, and we'll see how a swaps bank can improve both their lives, how a swap can help. Um, okay, so. Company A goes to its bank, which rather unimaginatively I'll call Bank A. Company B goes to its bank, which I'll call Bank B. And basically, here are the terms on offer. Now, Company A is big, well-known, well-established. Company B, a little bit smaller, finds it harder to raise money. So, Company A goes to its bank and is offered the following. The bank says, if you want to borrow five million from us and pay a fixed rate of interest, um, you'll pay us 7%. If on the other hand, you'd like a five million pound loan at a variable rate of interest, you can pay us the London Interbank offer rate, LIBOR. Now that's a variable rate set by the banks between themselves that fixes the variable cost of borrowing for companies that want to pay variable rates of interest. So LIBOR changes. Potentially it can change every day. Uh, around mid-morning, the banks get together and decide what the London Interbank offer rate is going to be, and that's then published by the British Bankers Association. But the important thing with this example is it's a variable rate. So the fixed rate of seven won't change over, say, five years. LIBOR might, depending on what happens to the Bank of England base rate. Okay. Company B goes to its bank. Now, Company B is less well known. That's life. It's smaller. It doesn't have the clout of Company A over here. So the bank says, well, if you want a fixed rate, you'll pay us 10%. And if you want a variable rate, you'll pay us LIBOR plus one. So whatever LIBOR is, you're paying us 1% or 100 basis points over LIBOR. So if in three years' time, LIBOR is 8%, you're paying us nine. If in five years time LIBOR is 10%, you're paying us 11 and so on. Or you can just take a fixed rate 
So when you get out of bed in the morning, you know exactly what you're paying, but that's 10%, take it or leave it. Okay, now you might think company B wants a fixed interest loan, so it just takes the 10%. Company A wants a variable rate loan, so it just agrees to pay LIBOR on 5 million. But actually, and you may be able to see what's coming, there's a way for a swaps bank, which I'll pop in here, to help both of its clients and make a bit of money for itself at the same time. And here's what's going to happen. Despite wanting to pay a variable rate, let's assume, and this is a slightly artificial conversation, but it'll get us through the example and show how the whole swap can help everybody. Um, let's assume the conversation goes like this. The Swaps Bank says to company A, I know you'd like to borrow 5 million at a variable rate. But actually, when you take out a loan with Bank A, what I'd like you to do is the exact opposite. So, by all means, take a loan from Bank A for 5 million, but pay Bank A the fixed rate of 7%. Then it goes to its other client, company B, and says, I know you want to borrow at the lowest possible fixed rate, 5 million, but bear with me, go to your bank and take out a loan at the variable rate. So in other words, um, go and get the money you need from bank B, 5 million pound once more, but pay them the variable rate of LIBOR plus one. So what you have so far is two companies. They've taken out separate loans, both for five million, with their own banks, and at the wrong rate in both cases. So how can a swaps bank give them the rate they want and reduce the cost of it? Here's the answer. Okay, now I'm gonna make up a few numbers here. These don't have to be the exact numbers, but let's say, for example, and here come the two swaps. Why two? Because it shows how the bank can make some money and also help two clients. And it also shows how the bank can sort of offset risk on each side. So let's say the swaps bank says, right, I'm gonna do a swap, a separate deal with each of my clients. And these are separate swaps. So there's swap one and there's swap two. And literally a swap is just exchanging one thing for another, in this case interest rates. So the Swaps Bank says, okay, company B, you've borrowed five million from bank B. You don't need another five million from us. You just want to change the interest rate you're paying on that loan. You're paying a variable rate and you'd rather pay fixed. So without borrowing another five million, let's agree a swap just for the interest on what's called a notional amount of five million. In other words, we're just gonna swap the interest payments you're committed to, nothing else. We're not giving you another five million, because that'd be 10. You don't need another five million from us. You just want to change the interest payments from variable to what you originally wanted fixed. So basically, here's the deal. Swaps Bank says, on a notional five million, we'll pay you LIBOR, and you can pay us eight and a half percent fixed. Then it goes to company A and says, we'll do a deal with you, another swap. Um, basically, you pay us LIBOR and we'll give you 8% fixed. So there's swap one with company A, separate contract, there's swap two. No new cash changing hands, no five millions, just an agreement to swap the interest payments on what's called a notional amount of five million. In other words, every, let's say, six months, the swaps bank will settle the difference with company B between LIBOR and 8.5% on five million. And every six months, it'll sit down with company A and swap the difference in interest terms between the LIBOR rate and a fixed 8% on five million. So that could mean, depending on what LIBOR does, which is a variable rate, company B could be paying the swaps bank or vice versa, and the same on this side. Now, it looks complicated, but actually, here's the bit of financial magic. Because, first of all, the Swaps Bank is making money. It receives 8.5% from company B and pays 8 to company A. 
it pays LIBOR to company A and LIBOR to company B both on 5 million sterling. So basically whatever LIBOR is, 5 million times LIBOR flows in and flows out and 8.5% on 5 million comes in and only 8% goes out. So the Swaps Bank is making half a percent as its profit. And half a percent of a big number is worth having. And it'll make that half a percent even if the interbank variable rate was 20%. Because 20 comes in, 20 goes out, so that's neutral. But it still makes the difference between 8.5% and 8%. Provided company B keeps paying over the term of the swap, let's say 5, 10, 20 years, it'll make that half a percent. Now what about his clients? Are they happy? Company B wanted to pay the lowest possible fixed rate. The bank B offered it 10%, that's as low as bank B was ever going to go. With the swap, look what's happened. Basically, LIBOR cancels. If you like mathematically, I can do that. Because whatever LIBOR is, it comes into company B on 5 million and goes out on 5 million, leaving plus 1%. So what is company B effectively paying on its original 5 million loan from bank B through a combination of the interest agreement with bank B and the swap? And the answer is 8.5 plus 1 or 9.5% fixed. And 9.5% fixed is less than 10% fixed. Thanks for that Tim, but that's the point. It saved itself half a percent. You might think that's not much, but on 5 million over say 10 years, that's worth having. Company A, on the other hand, always wanted to borrow 5 million at the lowest possible variable rate. Its bank said, if you come to us, you'll be paying us the LIBOR rate. That's the best we can do. You'll be paying us the interbank rate. As a result of the swap, where is it now? And the answer is paying LIBOR to the swaps bank, but receiving 8% on 5 million and only paying out 7, fixed in both cases. So given that's a fixed 1% saving on 5 million, in effect, Company A is now paying LIBOR for the whole term of the loan minus 1%. And that's better than paying LIBOR. And that is the point of the swap. Ultimately, Company A is now paying a, paying a variable rate of interest, which is lower than it could have got from its own bank. Company B is paying a fixed rate of interest which is lower than it could have got from its own bank. And it works because of something called comparative advantage. What the swaps bank knows, because it knows both clients, is they are able to borrow at different terms. Just as you and I borrow at different terms. The terms for, for loans and mortgages and so on can vary depending on the size of your deposit, your credit history and so on. And that's the same for companies. All the swaps bank's done is to spot the gap and make a bit of money for itself by setting up two swaps with its clients. Now, <clears throat> I've made that sound very simple. Um, there are some risks. If company A or company B go bust, you've got a problem. So the swaps bank needs to be fairly sure that both clients are capable of meeting their obligations under the swap. It might take some security from them. That's called collateral. And you might think, how does this help me in the retail market? Well, the answer is swaps banks and swaps do help to bring down borrowing costs for everybody. So not just for companies, but on mortgages. But unfortunately, if you're thinking, well, you know what, I'm paying a variable rate mortgage right now, or oh, I really wish I could swap that for a fixed rate as interest rates rise, sadly, your mortgage probably isn't worth enough to a swaps bank to arrange an interest rate swap. The economics just don't stack up. Um, you'd have to cancel your mortgage and start again, if you like, and that's probably something that's uh, prohibitively expensive. But it's worth bearing in mind that the existence of swaps is one of the reasons why uh, mortgage rates aren't potentially higher than they otherwise would be.